Good evening, good afternoon, good night. I don't know what it is for you when you're watching this right now. We got all kinds of things we're going to talk about. I'm Lionel from Toronto, and I'm Robert from Nashville, USA. Yeah, What's stick up? around because we're going to talk about a number of things here. We got we're going to definitely be mentioning something about some NHL hockey because there's some surprises in the league this year. Teams up here, teams down there. Should they be reversed? Is there stuff in the middle where you think there should be further down or higher up? International hockey, there's laws being written. I don't know if uh, what they've done is supposedly good, bad, or just not good enough. We'll get into that. Uh, and bad also, indifferent. Yes, in, indifferent. <laughs> no. Uh, and also, uh, are you a Windows user who's still using Windows 10? There's some information you probably know or should know. Things you should do, could do, or should you? And uh, why don't we, you know, what, what the, hey, do you want to start with that? Stick around. Yeah, if sure. Talk, if you want to hear about that sports stuff, please stick around. If you're an NHL fan, especially if you're into international hockey, too. Anyways. Uh, yeah, Robert, I, I will say about the hockey stuff, most of the exciting stuff is in Canada because the U.S. hockey team sucks, but we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. So, uh, Windows, real quick. <laughs> Um, as everybody knows, Windows 11 has been out for a long time. And for all of you Windows users, which is probably a good majority of you, if you're on Windows 10, Microsoft is saying be ready for end of life on Windows 10. It will yeah, be yeah. Uh, sometime next year. And, you know, they're cutting life cycles much shorter than they ever used to. I think Windows XP was out for like 15 years before they cut into life. And now, you know, Windows yeah, 11 has barely been out. And now Windows 10 is on the chopping block, which is listen, good. In all fairness, Windows Windows XP was also the actual operating system uh, for both professional and consumer for, uh, what was it, not eight or nine years? Long time. Seven years. I can't long remember. The, I can't remember. That. It was a long time. So even after they, they did the switch over, um, there was nearly no businesses uh, or government agencies that were willing to switch because what they had was what they needed. And at the time, it was the most secure. Uh, it worked, you know, very well. It had been updated so many times at this point that they had fixed all kinds of flaws and holes and anything that was wrong. Well, not anything, but a lot of it. Uh, Windows 7, on the other hand, um, out of the gate, it, it wasn't the greatest thing in the world. Uh, what were you gonna do with that? Um, nobody. I, I don't had no problem with Windows Seven. Well, the, I you I, I didn't, but most most big businesses did not switch. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure no government agency switched. Uh, Windows Eight. Some businesses thought this does look. You know, they got suckered into it a little bit. <laughs> but the the bottom line is is that when it when it comes to this, the the reason that that uh, things are coming a little faster and things are being updated and not supported as long is just because the technologies are in need of new actual hardware. And, and uh, there are certain things that just don't work properly. And sometimes it's like this type of thing isn't going to work well with this. For instance, if you bought an old Windows XP device that technically could run Windows 11, technically, it's probably not going to run it very well. It, it would be like me putting Android 15 on on uh, my first Pixel phone. It, it's going to be slow. Uh, yeah, but that that's not even really the big issue. I mean, obviously, no, well, you know, coming from you know working in tech every day, the biggest okay. issue you have is security. And the problem is, is that so many manufacturers of software, peripherals, other devices. They're moving their life cycles so quickly, and you have all these new vulnerabilities. So Microsoft is trying to keep pace and making sure they keep up to date with their OS information right. and security. And the problem is, is that if they take you know money and personnel resource and apply it to a platform that's going away, they're just wasting that money and time on something that they could be getting better well, yeah, in the future. Yeah, so, absolutely. But, but it really base, it, boils down to security, not so much yeah. you know as to whether things can run or not. Like, for example, let me just say the, the one of the biggest things is the TPM module in a computer. 
Right. They're up to 2.0. Well, all the old computers don't support TPM 2.0. Exactly. And that's what I meant by that. So, a lot of people don't understand that this is a hardware issue. Uh, it, it's the same thing. It's the same thing as like in your Samsung phone, my Pixel phone, and I'm pretty sure Apple phones have some form of that too. I don't know what they call theirs. But basically, all the security is basically done through that. So if you, it's like you can explain that a lot better than I can. Uh, that's that's your cup of tea in there. Um, yeah. Well, TPM yeah, stands for Trusted Platform Module. And right. it's basically uh, an, a physical device on a motherboard that helps protect the low level, you know, right. executables and not executables really, but that's yes. the easiest way to say it. Uh, and so, yeah, if it doesn't support the newer version, then it's not going to work anymore. And so, yeah, you know, you know what? I'm not going to lie to you that that actually makes for like one of the best segues in the history of the world. Um, <laughs> I'm going to bring this up. This is not about the Windows thing. So we're segueing because where where I'm going with this one is is this is this is about uh, uh, excuse me. I'm looking at Notebook LM and I can't even speak anymore now. You want to help me out here? <laughs> I no, do, uh, use it more Can than I ever use yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, Canada, I was mentioning the law changes. Well, Canada passed a couple of laws in regards to uh, uh, right to repair uh, uh, issues. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're getting more in line with uh, like what is trying to be done, uh, at least, in, in the U.S. Um, so basically, let me just read this. Uh, this is this is a summarized version of what I pulled off of the web using Notebook LM, uh, and we did mention that. I think we mentioned that uh, not long ago, right on, on the on the show. Anyways, uh, Canada has new laws making it legal to bypass software locks on electronics for repairs, but these laws don't provide access to the tools actually needed to perform those repairs. Now. Um, that's interesting because it also mentions a little further down uh, in here, a similar situation exists in the U S where it might be legal to repair something like a McDonald's ice cream machine, but there's no legal way to access the specialized tools needed to actually do it. Now that's, <laughs> first of all, that's kind of stupid. Um, second of all, there is some other wording and I'd actually have to dig that up, but some of the wording in the way it's, uh, mentioned in Canadian law as it's gotten what's called royal assent. Uh, I'm not sure what you call it in the U.S. when I guess the president puts a seal on it or something. I don't know. Uh, but it, royal assent means it's now passed into law. So what what uh, one of the things that they've mentioned is that it includes anything within the phone. Now, I find that that sounds a little bit odd because it basically means you've given somebody permission to repair your phone and they have to be able to get into it and have to be able to unlock it and they have to be able to get into this, that, and everything else and whatever. But the problem is, what if you have something hidden that's password protected and password hidden? Well, it, they can crack it because you, you, they now have the legal right to do so. And the way they've worded it, it almost sounds like it means without your permission if you've dropped it off to be repaired. So that's... That, this is one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up. I think this law has way more issues than what they've just talked about uh, yeah. because that's, that is a very gray area and they did not, they did not specify that that's not legal and it did make it sound too much. But well, here's uh, one thing I noticed that's kind of funny mm -hmm. is they have in their TPMs, technological protection measures <laughs> which is not the tpm in your computer <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it does say that uh <laughs> but but uh, keeping in mind that this is this is related to the fact that most phones at least until recently did have that because it was more software driven that was something that you had to have uh, encrypted uh, uh, passwords that would uh, have encrypted files attached. And that was the only way that you would be able to get in to do anything. So in other words, you or I could never do anything with it anyways without right. what iPhone users would call jailbreaking or we call rooting, right? Uh, right? You gain root access or jailbreak and you have access to do whatever you need. You no longer need to break that. 
Uh, however, as we mentioned, most phones actually do have. Uh, is it called a TPM in the, in the, in the phone or is it something, is it a different name? I have no idea to be honest with you. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't remember, but I know Samsung has one of their own that they've designed and made. Uh, Google has their own. Uh, well, they have, but well, Samsung has that whole Knox system. I guess that's probably part of that, I guess. It, oh no, it is. They, yeah. Because they have, it's not just, it's not just software. They, they add software right. to it much like Google does, but, right. uh, but it's also, uh, they have a chip. Uh, at least from the 24, but I think from the 23 up even. I'm not I'm not sure. Again, I think we talked about this a few weeks ago, and I, I've now forgotten. <laughs> Forgive me. Uh, anyway, so uh, what it, what it, what it uh, entails here uh, is technical protection measures, TBMs, digital locks are measures. That, yeah, we already talked about that. Right to repair the movement, advocating for the consumer's ability to repair their own electronics and access the necessary tools and information. Of course, the problem with that is, again, if you don't have the access to the tools, it can't be done. Now, this is not to say that some place like iFixit can't do it. They can. They have the tools. But what iFixit is complaining about is that they cannot sell you the tools so you can repair it at home without voiding a warranty. Now, in some cases, they're saying that you should be able to do this without being able to, without having voided a warranty. Or in some cases, that's not the case. The issue you would void a warranty but you still have the right to do it and still have a right to be able to get it serviced, even yeah. if you have to pay for it yourself. Whereas before a right to repair becomes a thing at all, or it has been, you saw a place like Apple, for instance, if you did anything, they wouldn't even repair it if you paid them through the nose. You'd have to buy a new phone. Right. And I don't know where the laws stand in the U.S. on that issue yet. Uh, I'm not sure if it's passed or if it's only passed in some states. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have not ever. I mean, I know what you're talking about, but I've not paid much attention to it. I don't, it, you know, right. it doesn't really affect me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so in any case, that's that's basically uh, how that how that one goes. And we don't need to go too far and too deep into that, obviously. But um, I'm really not sure what to make of that. And that 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 news just basically hit. Uh, I just saw it today. So this is something that they, they've obviously just done in Canada. Um, but I think one of the reasons is they want to, they want to try to stay closer to what is going on in the U S as well. So uh, it, 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 it's more on par. So, I mean, you know, if you need to get your phone fixed and you're in a foreign country, you should be able to get what you need to, you know, fix it or take it where you want to get a new screen or whatever it is you need to do. And True. I personally agree with all of that because, um, you know, back in the day, if you bought a Sylvania TV, yeah, I said Sylvania, uh, you could uh, you could take it to any repair shop. Or, well, back in those days, they'd come to your house. Um, you can't, I mean, that's not a thing anymore. You know what I mean? People do take their TVs in to be repaired, but it's usually some uh, some guy who's, who, whose father taught him to do it and he's been doing it for 50 years himself, and he's three years out of retirement, away from retirement, you know, working in a small shop in a strip mall. <laughs> well, good thing he's not stripping in the mall, though. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, you, you're waiting on that one, weren't you? Anyways. Um, no, just the, yeah. no, just, it just came to me. <laughs> Probably holding that one for months. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. Uh. Do you got any uh, uh other interesting news that's U.S. specific at the moment, or even any specific state where you live? Some stupid law in California. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. No. Nothing. Nothing statewide. I mean, obviously, I've been following the post. Um. You know, Trump landslide. And all uh -huh. the people he's putting in the cabinet, and uh, you know, another one interesting thing. Though, I, 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 I haven't. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. Sorry, well, ironically, I, that's I okay. Ironically, I, I completely he, forgot to do this. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's brought in Waltz <laughs> onto his cabinet. <laughs> Who? Who? Kamala Harris's old running mate. He said, oh, you couldn't make it with her? Why don't you come over here with me, and you can be in part of my cabinet. 
Exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so I've been following a lot of that, and, and and there's some crazy people he's put in places that I'm just like, what? It's gonna be it's gonna be a wild ride, folks, for the next four years. So just strap in and 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 enjoy the ride. Grab some, change, grab some popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Um, but one thing interesting. So you remember when he was in office the first time, and he talked so much about the TikTok ban and how he was going to ban them. And then yeah. he got out of office, and then you know the, the you know Biden administration has been threatening that now for a long time, right? And supposedly you know they have this deadline of January nineteenth or something that um, if it's not sold, it's going to be banned or you know whatever the case may be. Yeah. Well, I had read something, and I don't know all the details. I didn't get into. It. I didn't have time this afternoon to dig into it. But now he's talking about blocking that ban to where they're not banned. And I'm like, what? And then it dawned on me. I'm like, I bet you he doesn't want to ban because hell, TikTok's probably half the reason he got reelected. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. Charlie Kirk and all these people that are on you know TikTok that were like promoting him. It's probably like hell. TikTok's got me back in office. Why do I want to ban it? <laughs> I don't know. I, that could be. I'm I mean, that's lot, not. Man. That's not you know the reason, but I just and I, again I haven't had a chance to dig into it. Uh, I was just like, wow, that's kind of odd. I mean, yeah. I, <laughs> uh, well, you know, some of the people that he's, it, I don't even, you know what, I don't even know what to say. It, he did the same thing the last time, but at least some of the people he had, although maybe not the best people for the job, technically were in the industry, if you want to put it that way to some extent uh but this time he's putting people in that like that have no business being in high government positions at all with like, <laughs> yeah. i i don't know what you know what uh, we could go on with that forever and and there's you know well there's, he's you know, um he's put <laughs> elon musk Oh God! In his cabinet to lead the Department of Government Efficiency. Well, I can't make this shit up, man. <laughs> Elon Musk to lead Department of Government Efficiency, the Trump cabinet. Hey, hey, what was it? Who what did he? Who did he put in charge of the uh, 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 sec def? Who did they make the sec def? I don't know. Let's oh, see here. God. Secretary of Defense. Let's see. Trump. Sec of Defense. I'm scared. Oh, um, some guy named Pete Hedgeseth. I don't even know who Pete Hedgeseth is. I've never even heard that name before. Okay. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Gemini. Wait, wait, what was the name again? Hedge Seth H E G S E T H. First name Seth. H Hedge Seth. Uh, yeah. Seth. Wait, it's wait. Say the. I'm sorry. Say the name one more time. Okay. <laughs> Pete. Pete. Hedge Seth. Hedge Seth. Yeah. Who is Pete Hedge Seth? Pete Hegseth is a prominent figure in American media and politics. He's widely recognized as a conservative political commentator on Fox News. Oh. Hegseth is also oh. an author. And I did. I, I didn't need to hear another damn word. Fox. Uh, yeah. As Secretary of Defense, people. Secretary of Defense. So basically, when every general and every politician who served and understands how things work says to the man... No, that's wrong. Mr. President, you can't listen to that. And he says, no, no, no. I'm the Secretary of Defense. You'll do what I say. And then 50,000 men walk to their death. They'll blame somebody else. Is that what that's? Uh, yeah. So we have uh, Susie Wiles, Chief of Staff. We have Tom Homan, Border Czar. I don't even know who Tom Homan is or Homan H O N. These sound like these sound all like actors from B movies that go straight <laughs> to video, straight to VHF. Yeah. Um, mm. Sorry, straight to Betamax. 
Uh, Mike Waltz is the national security advisor. He's obviously came, you know. Um, Elon Musk. Um, oh, apparently, and Vivek Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy. I don't know. Head of Department of Government Efficiency. Um, Christy Noam, Homeland Security Secretary. Um, he's got Rubio on his cabinet as Secretary of State. Oh, right. 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 That's going to go. Marco now. Rubio, Secretary of State. So basically, if Trump and the Vice yeah. President, who's the Vice President again? I, I don't even know. Don't know. <laughs> What's All his right. name? So, so Trump and whoever the vice president is. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever not known who the hell the vice president was. That's uh, yeah, there's so many names. Vance. That's right. Vance. Vance. Yeah. Right, right, right. Vance, Vance. Okay. Trump and Vance, uh, for some reason, are indisposed. And I'm being as polite as possible. Let's just say something goes wrong and, and Air Force One is having a problem. They're stuck in the air. We'll say it that way. <laughs> and shit hits the fan back in the U.S. The only man that can get the job done with communications down is Rubio. Marco Rubio. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be an interesting one. So, all right. Well, yeah, this. Uh, okay, we're you know what we're going to move on. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not even kidding. I I don't I don't think I can handle much talk about that, uh, especially when it's. Uh, I. Uh, uh, where's the boo? Where's the boo on here? Is there a boo on this sound thing? I only I see laugh so. and clap. Yeah, I think I think that's more <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Is this gonna be a joke? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So <laughs> let's uh let's talk hockey. Mm. <laughs> I hate to do this to you. I'll buddy. just I'll just be sitting over here and you no, can, no, no, you no, can no, talk no. coffee. Let, let, let's get I don't it. Let's, have anything let, to talk about. No, no. We we do have something to talk about because we want to discuss what the hell is going on with the Preds. And hey man, what the hell's going on with the Jets? It depends on how you wanna, you know, or you know, are you a fan of one or the other? Are you not? Who are you interested in? Are you a Rangers fan? How do you feel about last night? Sorry about that. I am a Jets fan, obviously. But that said, what's going on with the Preds? I'm going to say this right now, and I'm going to try to make my point, and then you go with yours. It's kind of point, point, counterpoint, if you disagree, that is. The Preds need a new coach. And here's my thinking on that. I've not only watched some highlights very recently about recent games or with recent games, but I was watching a little mini documentary on what they've been doing wrong this season and part of last season and what they did right when they went on that 15 0 and 2 run. I think that's what it was, right? 15 0 and 2? Something 17 like that. Undefeated That'll never regulation happen. games. Oh, well, dude, it, you know what? It's very rare it happens to any team, so it probably won't. Yeah. Well, um, let me take the back. We're going to be 0 and 15. So, yeah, it'll happen again. They're not going to be 0 and 15. Okay. You can stop that. Anyways, listen, here, here's the thing. They were talking about how they set up in plays, and, and, and there's just a structure that isn't there. And they don't believe in themselves. Now, here's where I think a new coach, at least a good one, anyways, can make a massive difference. They get in there and they start telling them, you guys are running around and you're doing this, and this is not happening. Now, one of the problems is, if if they're tracing after the puck in the offensive end, they've got three guys chasing the guy in behind the net or into the corner. The problem is the puck squirts out, and now you got four guys on the other team going back against two, meaning you probably got at least a two-on-one the other way. And how many times have you seen that happen? I've heard you tell me lots of times, oh, they got breakaways, they've allowed five two-on-ones this period alone. I remember you telling me that the one time. No, it was three breakaways that period and a few two-on-ones as well. Oh, yeah. It's, in one yeah, it's, period. It's a problem. And this is what I'm talking about. So a different structure train retrains these guys to actually stick to how they're playing. But also their defensive structure is absolutely abysmal. They're not actually playing. It's like they're trying to do strictly man-on-man 
but nobody knows which man to pick. If you don't know what, you should automatically fall back to a zone defense. But uh, like, honestly, right now, I think the Preds need to actually play a trap, a, a, some form of a trap, a uh, neutral zone trap, at least for a couple of games. Uh, get a new coach, have figure out that offensive issue, which will get them. Here's the thing. If they've got the puck more often and they keep it off the sticks of the other team more often, they gain confidence. And then the puck starts going in the more. It goes in the more confidence, more confidence, more it goes in. This is what happened to the Jets last year. They couldn't score that much. They, they were like, uh, I think, 17th in the league in scoring last year or somewhere in that neighborhood. Their defense was the best, but they, they in the last part of the season, I think they were they fell like to 18th or 19th in the league in scoring. They, were, they weren't good at all. Uh, they were worse than middle of the pack. This year, they're number one by a good margin. Defensively, still number one. They may not show as number one because of the goals, but if you look at all the other teams that are slightly better defensively, they all have at least one or two or three games in hand, meaning they're probably let in more than the Jets did in the same amount of games played. So the Jets yeah, lead well, in almost every category because they got a new coach that even though they had a good coach last year and two years prior, they had a good coach. Uh, they both got them like this far and couldn't quite get them there. Their new coach changed just a couple of little things. Bam, there you go. So that's that's my piece on why the Preds need to get a new coach. So counterpoint. I don't disagree that there's okay. things that need to be changed and updated. I don't know that it's a whole coaching problem, however. Now, there are things I see that are coaching problems, like – for you know, despite the fact that Stamkos is an amazing player, he's a 50 goal scorer. I mean, the guy's a legend, yeah. he's going to be one of the top you know players, he's going to be a Hall of Famer, blah blah blah. Right, right, got it. But he is not the only one that can score you know power play goals. The problem is, is that they like they'll circle it around the net, around the net, trying to get it to Stamkos to do his little you know, yeah. um. Ovechkin, you know, one time slapper from the circle, and everybody knows it. And and they're they they, they they're wasting time. That needs to stop. They need to just like get the puck to the net and stop trying to make Stamkos be the power play guy. Yeah. His his moments will come. He will get his power play goals. Right. With all that other stuff going on, because he's gonna catch the rebounds, he's gonna catch those pucks that come out, etc. But I'm sorry. You don't have a 90.9% PK without having good defensive structure. That's a player problem, not playing properly with your teammates. You don't have that high of a PK yeah. <laughs> and have terrible defense because that's, you know, that's where the penalty kill comes from is your defenseman. So that's well, you know that's that, that's that, player that, problem. I'm sorry, that's not entirely true. Well, it is for uh, the let majority. Me, let me let it me is. let me give you let me give you an example. Who's got who's got like uh, the fourth? I think it's the third or fourth best penalty kill in the league right now, and it's still climbing. And oh. that would be the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, how far are they off from the lead in the best penalty killing in, in the league? Probably not very far at all. Uh, four or five games, they could be number one if they play well enough for that in the penalty kill. Here's what the Jets basically have in the penalty kill. First of all, they have a solid structure for it. Uh, but what they do is, in addition to putting on as much pressure as possible, they move the puck. And, it, and, and often, it's forwards that actually get that touch and get that puck out. It's often before a defenseman ever does. So the defenseman's doing his job and keeping it away from the net. But you still need forwards to do their jobs properly for that. So in saying that an entire, a team's entire defense is considered good based on their penalty kill isn't good. What I'm saying, though, is that the Preds have the talent and the ability to be an extremely good defensive team, and they do have one of the best goaltenders in the league in Soros. But coaching needs to change because they don't know the structure. They're playing basically as they're told to a certain point and then winging it beyond there because nothing is working. 
So that coaching change is what makes the difference. Now, often crappy teams, and I mean way crappier than you think the Preds are, have had coaching changes and gone on six game win streaks before finally falling back to earth because the coach wasn't really that good. So, I mean, worst case scenario, they change coaches and I guarantee you the Preds are good enough and they have enough talent that they'll go on a winning streak just because of that. Well, Let's I, not forget, I, I didn't did say that three in a row earlier because you have a good because we have a good penalty kill that we have a great defense and all that. I, I'm I'm just saying that in our structure, you don't have Stamkos, Marcheseau, Forsberg out there killing penalties. Yeah. You have Shin, right. you have Yossi, you know, you have your defensemen out there doing the primary killing. Okay, yeah. so you have to have good defensive skill set and players to have a good penalty kill. Well, you, you don't need so you don't need Marsha so and Forsberg, right. as you said. But what right. about your what about your journeyman guys? Don't you have good fourth liners and third liners that that's to get out there with the defenseman. Well, the yeah, Colton kill? Sissons. He he's a he's a great penalty killer, and exactly. he's a he's a center. So I mean, he does a yes. fantastic job too. I mean, yeah. there's no one better at sticking yeah. a stick out in the middle of the uh, pass and and you know, chipping it. Right. So you have that, but we're not scoring goals. Okay. Right. Forsberg last year was what forty eight goals, forty six goals. Stamkos was over 50. I'm sorry. Wow, he he scored 48 last year? 46 or something. Yeah, he was oh I mean, he scored God. a lot he of goals. I mean, fire. Now, he's wow. not doing bad. I mean, yeah. he's definitely the lead of the team right now. Score Forsberg's right. definitely still producing, but I mean, I I don't I you know, I just I, I don't know. Well, Some of the it, issues it, I see are poor passing. It's yes, not communicating. Yes, yes. But I'm telling These are right player now, problems. Listen, These are not coaching problems. This is it's all. This, you know what? It's always a player problem. The problem is, is that you can have the smartest, best players in the world playing on a team, and a coach who doesn't coach them with the right structure in a planned attack isn't going to work. And you're going to get guys running around like chickens with their heads cut off. And then you got this guy going, "Well, I got to give it to Stam Close because he's the guy who scores 50 goals every year." that's not going to work. Everybody knows Stamkos no. is there. You need to no. play in a structure where Stamkos will probably end up giving the puck to someone else. What's going to happen? The guy's probably going to end up giving it back because Stamkos is now standing in front of an empty net. Right? This, this is what happened. If you watch some of the highlights from the Jets game last night, they got on a two on one and, and it was just so obvious that he was going to pass the puck to the other guy. Uh, I can't remember who the hell it was on the ice right now. Sorry about that. It's just some reason it slipped my mind. But he passes it to him, and he doesn't shoot. He gives it back because now the goalie has slid halfway out the ice. I mean, he's practically at home making some you know biscuits and tea, and and, and he's got an empty net to just tap it into now. So I mean, this is the kind of thing that I'm used to seeing the Preds do, and I know this because I remember seeing them do stuff like that against the Jets a few years back, uh, and many other teams. Uh, but they're not doing that because they don't even really know how. No one's telling them you got to You have to play a specific style of hockey a certain way. The Jets do it a certain way, and if you watch how they play, oddly enough, take a look at how they do their defense. They actually do do a form of a trap. Uh, what do they call it again? I think it's a um, left wing neutral zone trap. Uh, and in oh, that yeah. one, what happens is as the opponent's coming down the left wing, two guys go over here, one here and one further down, forcing him to have to either dump or throw it. If he dumps it, there's a, at least one jet back here to get it. If he throws it across, there's one guy in the middle, and there's another guy over here, and there's another guy over here to intercept that. And that doesn't prevent them from getting in every time, but it does prevent them from being able to get uh, access to... Uh, or to uh, quick possession in, in the offensive zone or in the Jets' case, in, in their zone. So it usually results in them turning it around quickly, regaining the puck control, and going back the other way. Now, what the Jets do to combat any form of trap is rather than doing the dump and chase classic, get to the red line, slam it in, and hope and run, they get up as close as they can usually, and they do a quick dump and then usually run around. If the guy tries to hang on to him, they draw a penalty. If he doesn't, they end up getting in there to it, and they can either dump it further from inside the zone 
and another jet can get to it or they can pass it, sometimes even right out into the center. This is something that's successful. If you watch, it's done by uh, the Lightning. Uh, it's done by Edmonton. Uh, and I'm telling you right now, if you remember the Preds when they were successful last year for a while, they were doing a lot of that too, something very similar. So when you see them get into the corner, except I will say this too, the Preds were actually for a while last year were pretty good at doing a dump and full chase, but they're not a fast team. That's the problem. So they they well, really need to to work on throwing the body around a little bit better and doing short dump and 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 chase i mean how do you have stamkos o'reilly march so forsberg <laughs> nyquist i know you're just throwing out names and though. a minus 14 goal differential that's because they're not <laughs> I know, but that's scoring. my that's my point. That but is my point. Because of the that's reasons bullshit. that I mentioned, if they had a coach that would give them the structure and give them the right forms to play, because they, they that's why they draw all these X's and O's on the boards. Uh, like a lot of people think, oh, well, do they really need to do that? Just go out and play hockey. Like, this is not pond hockey. Uh, you're playing against the best play best players in the world are playing against the best players in the world. You have to be better than that. It's like uh, it's like Jake Paul thinking he can get in the ring with Mike Tyson. Sorry, I had to. Um, <laughs> anyways, look, we have we have one, two, three oh. players that have a plus one. Everybody else is a negative. We don't even have really? any. But yes, everybody's on my minus like Forsberg minus three, St Nyquist minus two, Stamkos minus eleven plus minus minus. I mean, well, you see, now that's the thing. Stamkos shouldn't be a minus eleven. Again, this comes to coaching. You can tell. You can say this anytime, a thousand ways from Sunday, and you refuse to believe it. But I guarantee you, they fire that coach and get a new one. They start winning pretty quickly, and you'll understand exactly what I mean. Re remember one thing, and don't take this as an insult. But a Canadian from a city that's had hockey all my life, I I've seen this a billion times. You 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 most of your coaching changes weren't because your team was bad. It's because they just weren't good enough at the time, right? Uh, no, I understand. I'm not saying it's not. Bad? I'm not saying the coach is not part of the problem. But you, when course, you have these season the players, the when you have these season players. There's just a simple dynamic of you know how to play hockey and you're good at hockey yeah. and you can play with any kind of structure you want. Like whatever you're told, you can roll with it. Yeah. And you they're just what? not. Let so, me I mean, that's, me. you know, I don't know. Let me, get, let me give you a better example, okay? You're in high school. You keep mouthing off to the teacher and the teacher keeps trying to discipline you. It's not working. Eventually, the teacher just sends you to the principal. Let's consider that <laughs> the coaching change. Now... The principal just looks at you and says, get out. You're done. Yeah. Right? Uh, see, the coach is going to end up starting to bench people. And that's just going to create issues. Uh, it's not going to work. It's historically been a, the worst case scenario. Uh, Keenan did that so many times. Does he have a Stanley Cup or two under his wing? I mean, he probably does, yeah. Uh, but well, it's still, it, it, Mike Keenan had enough experience and coached enough good teams that guy should have had nine or 10 Stanley Cups in his career. But he was so mean and such an a-hole to the players. Uh, and he would bench guys just because he thought they had two bad shifts. And, and it was like for an entire period or even the rest of the game. And it was the, the dumbest thing in the world. And of course, it created animosity between him and the players. And sometimes a couple of players would start not getting along very well because why is this third liner you know, playing my spot on the first line for three straight games while I'm relegated to checking and I'm, and I'm a perennial 40 goal scorer. I mean, he's, you know, some coaches have done things like that. What, what they need is to have that structure, but let's get on. And to a little, I mean, it may not be positive to you, but it's positive to me uh, <laughs> because we have to talk about the other end of the spectrum at the top of the league. Uh, let's ask the first question. That yeah, because the Predators were at the yeah. very bottom of the league. Is that right? Did I see that right? That's exactly what you saw, yes. Yeah. Here's mm -hmm. the thing. 
I'm going to ask the question. It's the same question everyone's asking everyone right now. Are the Jets for real? Do you think they have a shot? Or have they not proven themselves at 15 and 1? What, nothing? We might, you know, for the people who are listening on the radio, man, come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I told you in the beginning of the season, you doubted me. <laughs> but I told you in the beginning of the season that there's nothing wrong with the Jets. Now I didn't think you, it'd be 15 you and never, one. The Jets were going to be number, I never, number one. Yeah. No, 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 no. I said there's nothing wrong with the, their the team structure. They're bringing back a, most of their core guys. They're all on the same lines. They're all doing the same things. They're going to be just fine. They're going to still be as dominant question. as they've always been. So. I, I've never ever said they weren't legit. So but people yeah, who are saying that, that, isn't, that isn't answering but, my question. My question is, are they going? Do you think that they've got what it takes to make a run in the playoffs? I've already told you. I think they're going to win the Stanley Cup this year. I've already told oh, yeah, you. That. But, yeah, but you were saying that in jest because just because of the the contrast between our two teams. No. No, when they hit that like <laughs> ten and one or ten and zero or whatever they were, I'm like, dude, they're they're going to go all the way. I I can't. I would be surprised if they didn't. Honestly, okay, if they well, don't, yeah. they're going to go. They're going to go. They're going to be in the final round. They'll be in the fight for it if they don't win. There, there's people who still. And then this is on true. I heard this. I didn't hear it myself with my own ears. I this is what I heard somebody else had said that some one of the broadcasters had said. Uh, during the Jets, or right after the Jets' first victory. This was after they won 6 nothing in Edmonton on game one. In Edmonton. Or was it in Winnipeg? Whatever, it was 6 nothing against Edmonton. Uh, apparently they said, well, it's too bad. This team's not even going to make the playoffs. And I, 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 I don't even know where I've that never heard anybody say that. that but. Because that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The Jets haven't failed to make the playoffs in a while. I mean, as it was the one year they didn't in, in relatively recent times, but they've been almost a perennial playoff team, uh, not doing well a few of those years, but uh, they have more than one time where they got out of the first round. And the one time, of course, where they went to the conference final. And th this is all in the last seven years. So they've basically done as good or better than 90% of the league. And yet you still got people thinking that they got no shot. And it, it's mind boggling because they said, oh, Toronto is going to be the team this year. They got the exact same people on the team doing the exact same thing every year. They never finish first. They never finish second. They never make it past the first round except one time. Sounds like the Jets, except the difference is the Jets were fourth in the league last year and seven years ago were second in the league. They are one of only about five teams in the last seven years that have been in the top five at least three times in the last seven years. I mean, obviously, well, no, more than five. Okay, Lightning, because that happened a number of times. The Preds made it in the top five two years in a row. Uh, wait a minute. No, did they? No, no, because the year before they squeaked no. into the playoffs. I remember that, yeah. And yeah. then they were number one the next year. And it's uh, been all downhill from there. And that's not true. They were still good the following year. Both the Jets and the Preds were no, good. No, it, it's all downhill. It's been on a steady decline. And now we're at the bottom of the league, and here we are, you know, what, a fourth of the way through the season. And, they and got we nowhere suck. to go. Hey, they got nowhere to go but up. <laughs> oh, that's not true. That's not well, true. No, no, no. You can't go any further than dead last. I'm oh, no, they can stay there. They can continue to lose and stay there. They're they lost. They, stay they, they lost. Uh, what? What? Tuesday night. They're gonna. Probably, you, we're playing the Oilers again tomorrow, and we're probably gonna lose again. So we've already lost twice to the Oilers. People, put some comments down here and let us know what you think. Do you believe the Preds have a shot at moving up the ladder? Do you think the Jets have a shot at staying on the top of the ladder? Where do you think people are gonna finish? What's your favorite team? Who do you think is gonna win the Stanley Cup? Who do you think is gonna win your division? What do you think is going to win East and West? Also, let's talk about that. The Jets did some did a number on the Rangers, at least in the score. But that game was really, really evenly played from beginning to end. Um, the Jets had taken advantage of uh, areas where they could. Hellebuck was a bit better a goalie last night. Um, Shosturkin did make some awesome saves, but he's Shosturkin. I can't even say his name right. 
Shesterkin, uh, as, as you would expect him to make awesome saves, right? Um, but the Jets are just such a good team. The Jets are such a good team that they can take advantage of, 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 of those little tiny little things, mistakes here and there and whatnot. The best teams do do that. Uh, the Rangers are a better team than what that score said. They were better in that game than the score suggested. That said, I think that proves even more that the Jets are for real because they didn't walk over them. Had they walked over them, it could have been construed by some people as the Rangers had a bad day, a bad game, and the Jets' luck is going to run out. But when they have close games against good teams who are playing well, and out shooting the Jets, but the Jets still win. You know, they've won one well, they've won games two to one. They've won games four to two, five to uh, three, six to three, seven to four. Look, look, uh, I, I, I'm surprised your eardrums are not blown out because a Jets game, this is all you hear. Constant. This is Preds. <laughs> Okay, that's All right. the present game. Hey, you're, you're you're getting in there now. You, you be careful. You don't want people to comment, make comments about you know, yeah, yeah, or a loser or something like that. Remember, you're. A I fan. need that. I need that air horn. It goes to be professional, but you got to be. You got to be objective and you know, you know. And what? <laughs> so so listen. What what do you, what do you think? Um, forgetting about the Jets and the Preds. How do you think the East is going to go? Who do you think is going to is going to get in there? Uh, do you think Toronto has a realistic shot, or do you think that's all Rangers and uh, uh, what do you call them, Florida Panthers? I think that I think honestly, the Toronto is going to be Toronto, and they're not going to do anything different than they did last year. They're, they're a good team, but I don't think they have what it takes to go over the top. They're putting too much yeah. on the their top two M's that they have. And yeah. I just don't think I don't think they're gonna be able to get past that. I think that they do, have, um, they do actually have a lot of depth, and they play a very similar game to the way the Jets do, just a little bit more high flying. Yeah, the the Rangers. Not I don't know. We'll see. Obviously, they have superior goaltending. He's gonna be. He's gonna win a Vesna. I mean, he's gonna be a Vesna guy. Uh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, who's gonna win a Vesna? Shesterkin is going to be is going to is going to be a Vezina guy. Well, right right now it's very much looking like Connor Hellebuck is run away for the Vezina. Okay, I'm I'm like, not saying like, right now. I'm saying as time moves on, years and down. I'm not saying this year. Don't get all don't get all but hurt about Hellebuck. He's going to catch up to Hellebuck and do better. I'm than saying Hellebuck. I'm not saying this or this year. I'm saying he's as good. He's okay. a good goalie that's going to be a Vezina guy. He's no, going to be a top goalie yeah, I, in this I league. One hundred percent agree with you. Go on, go on. All right. The Rangers have good skill. Obviously, yes. I think they're yeah. going to be in it. As if they're going to go I think they got, far. I, think they got I don't spot. think they're going to go far. I think depends, Florida has another they, chance to go in and win the Stanley Cup again. I think. I, I not only think they have a chance. I think that they're going to be the Jets' biggest issue and uh where that and i'm not going to say that this week is going to prove it because one of three things is going to happen either the jets are going to go in there and lose that game and then go home and lose to them again a few days later or a couple days later because they're doing a home and home thing right or they're going to go in there and beat them and then go home and beat them again or they're going to split that if they split it, then everyone's going to go, oh, yeah, it's the two best teams in the league. What so let me get this straight. You said it's going to be either this, this, or this, which is basically the only three outcomes you can possibly <laughs> No, well, because that, well, no shit. Of course it's the only possibility. But what I'm saying is there's other possibilities. I'm talking about what it is, is if the Jets, if the Jets beat them in both games, then people might be looking up and going, oh, my God. Right. If they lose both games, then everyone's going to be like, oh, God, see, I told you they sucked and it was just a fluke. And, and, but if they split it, people might actually be going, yeah, that's about right. The two best teams. Don't get me wrong. I hope the Jets beat them both games. 
<laughs> Will they? Well, I don't Probably. think anybody is saying or is going to say that the Jets are aren't one of the best teams. They're, they're, no, that's just not, that's actually ludicrous. actually there's a lot of people saying it. It's actually ridiculous how many people. Some of them are actually professional broadcasters. You don't say, you don't go fifteen and one and be a, a mediocre but, team. It's, no, I mean, they're still saying, oh yeah, but it's just now and it's early and there's no way the Jets can sustain this. And everyone's you know this is going to pass from us. Some people are even saying the Jets are going to make the playoffs. Absolutely, but they're never they have no shot in the playoffs whatsoever. Like they're actually still saying that. Yeah. Um, everybody in his dog still thinks that both the Rangers and uh uh the um uh panthers are better in in the case of the panthers but they also said that about the minnesota wild right uh what happened to oh no it was dallas wait a minute is minnesota they're playing next or is it panthers my goodness i have forgotten i i would have I, no i i would have i i would not be surprised if it was a panther jets you know all the way to the end I, I actually, to be honest with you, I, uh, it would be an interesting um, Stanley Cup final. At least I think so. Uh, Winnipeg Jets schedule is what I want. There we go. And I honestly think that if the Preds do not turn well, this to around, play the light first. I forgot about that. If the Preds do not turn this around in short order, and they don't start winning some games by come New Year's, they're not going to make the playoffs. They're going to be out. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's. Uh, Jets are heading off to Tampa to uh, play the Lightning again. And last time they played them, it was seven to four Jets. Just, just a reminder, just an FYI. Uh, then, <laughs> then they go to Florida or stay in Florida to play the Panthers. And then a couple of days later, a few days later, the Panthers go to Winnipeg to freeze and basically be buried in the snow by the Jets. Uh, then the Jets uh, head back out on the road to Pittsburgh and Nashville. Are you going to the game? No, remember, I'm going to be in Mexico. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's too bad. You could have got to watch my favorite team win. Um, sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> so, all right. I have no doubt. I mean, uh, you don't get any reaction from me because I have no doubt. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, here's the, here's the other thing. Uh, I'll just bring this up real quick. Um, I don't know what's going on in the NFL right now. Uh, but as long as we're talking about sports, you might just really briefly bring that up. But the CFL. The year, the first two years they won, they lost the next two. If they lose again, people will remember that they went three years in a row and lost. If they win, They'll be talking about how they won three out of five going to the cup five years in a row, and they'll be considered a, a minor dynasty. So it's going to be interesting. And we got dead air again. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't follow CFL, so I can't. Well, no, but you, you, but you follow NFL to a point, right? Yeah. You know well, my, my, again, my, again, my team is two oh, and no. whatever, and they're not going. You know, it's they're dead. So. Well, wait, how sucked. many games have they played so far? It's mid-season. So what's the record? What, two and seven? Oh. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> wait, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The Bombers were 0-4, and, and at one point they were 2-6. and six. They ended up winning the East, getting a bye into the final, or sorry, winning the West, getting a bye in the final, and now they've won that playoff game. And they're going to the great, to great Cup championship. So you can't tell me that two and seven means they're done halfway through the season. Win a, win five games in a row and you're in. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> you got to have a good team to do that. We do that not. Means, people said the same thing about the Bombers. Oh, they suck. They're not no. going to do it this year. And then they won eight straight games. Okay. How many? How many? Wait, whoa. How many Tennessee Titans games have you watched? None. Okay, thank you. They suck. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make the playoffs. I guarantee it. You know, I'm I will put money it. on that. You know what? I'm going to sit down and watch a Tennessee Titans game with you via some internet magic one day, and uh, we'll do a little reaction, just like we will hopefully be doing for the CFL championship, the Great Cup. Um, 
And if nothing comes up, yeah, we, I mean, we have that plan. What are you scared to watch a good team win? I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. With that said, we should probably start wrapping it up because I'm with gonna... that said, I might not. <laughs> oh, come on, man. You can't get that passionate about it. That's why they call it fanatic, by the way, folks. Mm -hmm. uh it's it's actually good to be passionate about your team and yeah unfortunately it sucks when they're down but i still think that your hockey team has plenty of time to get better i know you don't believe it but when it starts happening then you'll you'll See. you'll enjoy it so that said uh, i do want them to do better because they're not a team i dislike i like the preds i want them to do better i want them to make well yeah and i don't get me wrong i'm really glad that the jets are, are just being so dominant i again i want to say that i told you last year that they were going to not be 15 and one but they were going to be just as good this year as they were last year and yeah well you know, i'll tell you i'll tell you somebody who definitely now wants i them thought to go to the cup and that's that's the jets last coach or i thought the coach, predators for that was going to be a good team this year, but they oh, I I swear to you, I thought I, you know what we all thought that though. Do you do you realize that they're still middle of the pack or even slightly better in odds in betting in Vegas? <laughs> like Somebody's I don't gonna lose. I, I, I'm gonna lose sure a lot of money. <laughs> that's that's yeah, because their bets are their bet they're way too high in the odds. It doesn't oh, make any sense. Oh man, or too low on it. You know what I mean? Uh, and yeah. the Jets are actually barely above them. Um. For making the playoffs at all yet alone like they're almost not even an afterthought for a team possible to win people still have edmonton as number one to win the stanley cup based what? on based on two players they have two players on their team i'm sorry edmonton fans but you've got two players on your team okay the rest of the team is mm. at best average they play great when these other guys are scoring five points each a game. And then they just kind of rally around it. But you take that out, what do you got? And we'll say, well, McDavid wasn't around for some games, but Dreisaitl was. And I will argue this till I'm blue in the face. McDavid may be the best all-around player, but Dreisaitl is overall, not overall, I mean, sorry, uh, just as a pure Goal scorer and playmaker, without all the other flashy stuff, he's still that good. Whether you're playing with him or not, he'll take the puck and do it by himself. Not oh, saying McDavid can, obviously he can. But my point is that McDavid is a different level of it. He can elevate everybody else in the building, right? Um, kind of like Wayne Gretzky or Mario Lemieux or Steve Eiserman, right? But but Drysaddle doesn't even need to elevate everybody. He'll literally just do it himself. So yeah, he's he's he's, he's definitely player. uh exceptional. Yeah, just to put this into perspective, while maybe not the same level of talent, there are more people with NHL caliber scoring talent on the Predators if they get going. They're on paper. Yeah, on paper. Uh-huh. No, I said if they get going, they would be yeah. a, they would be a better team. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. On paper, they should be top of the league right now. I, I really honestly thought it would be Jets. Price. Not top of the league. You still don't have the best goaltender, and you still don't have Kyle Connor and Nick Ehlers and Mark Shifley. And uh, I was going to say Jacques Villeneuve. That's a race. Okay, card, we bro. do have one of the best goaltenders, and we have as many top players as you do. So no, you don't. I don't. Have I don't, I don't, even, you don't have. You don't have the best goaltender. We don't have last year's Vesna goalie, but we have one of the best goalies in the league. Period. Well, you have one of the best, but what right. has the best? No, he just got lucky. So he's not going to oh, get lucky. Oh, we're going to go there. He got lucky, did he? Yeah. For, yeah, for, yeah. For, for 13 straight games? When you have really good people playing in front of you, you can be a good goalie. So, mm. anyways, okay. them's fighting words. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Well, do you um, have a passport? Come on. Come on down. Get your passport. <laughs> drive on across the border. Come on down and, and show me about them fighting words. Yeah, yeah, fight words. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll meet you at the Tyson fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Before we go, no, this, they, they should, Jets and what? the Preds should be top five all year long with the, I, with the players I have on the roster. I hundred percent agree with you, but let's 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 get out of that for for you now. Serious question: What's your prediction, Tyson and uh, Numbnuts? I mean, uh, 
Tyson's going to kick his ass. <laughs> no, he's not. He's going to punch him in the face. Hard. Whatever. He's going to go down. My prediction is, is, is Paul, I mean, he may not be knocked out cold, but he'll probably wish he was. Yeah. Most likely he'll wish he was knocked out cold. Um, I don't care. I, I've watched some of Mike Tyson's, like, videos and training and some of his. Yeah, I've seen, like, I've seen I was watching it before I got on. Here. I don't care how old that dude is. He's going to kick his ass. Well, he, he, you know what? He may not have the speed he had when he was 23 years old. But what I saw in some of that training was, oh, he still looked like he was pretty damn fast for his age. He's still going to be faster than Jake Paul. Well, and he's still got the power. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I hadn't even gotten he, to that he, part yet. But my point is, is he's going to be faster than Jake Paul because it, just watch the training bills. Everybody thinks, oh, he's 50-something. He can't you How slow do you think 50-something is? My God, man. Wow. There are professional wrestlers that are still jumping off the top rope. Well, if you're talking about like, me and you, that's right. really slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but but we're not you know professional athletes now, are no. we? Thank God, no. man. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I don't think it's gonna... go, and even if it goes by twenty percent, but you're already forty percent stronger than anyone else, that still leaves you at thirty something percent stronger. So, yeah, no. Can he hit harder than than Jake? Of course he can. <laughs> uh. And and yeah, I, I'm and it's actual experience in actual boxing as the best boxer in the world for a long time. Um means that uh this amateur guy stepping into a professional ring is just like he's already done it once and got his ass beat by somebody who wasn't even that good, but he was a professional boxer and he embarrassed yeah. him. So yeah. right. It's he put just, on weight. It's though. a it's a publicity stunt. Uh hugely. Uh, he's going to get paid a pretty good chunk of change to get the shit kicked out of him. Matter of fact, if if they want to pay me what Jake Paul's going to be making, I'll let Mike Tyson give me a few punches. <laughs> I don't know if I would really be willing to go that far for that, but uh, I don't you think walk I'd home say with no without thinking $15 million dollars for, you know, oh, yeah. 30 minutes. <laughs> Put me in the hospital, man. Put me in the hospital. for Just don't million. kill me. Let me heal. And yeah, yeah. Well, I'm good. Yeah. I, I might even take the wheelchair for fifteen million. <laughs> uh, I get more. I get a motorized thing, and you know, get you know, uh, yeah. Google yeah. Gemini written right into the thing, and I can just tell it to go left and right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 no, I'm not gonna see it. Okay, that's fifteen million dollars. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. I, I have nothing else to say about that. <laughs> yeah, and on that, I don't really have anything else to say either. So. Um, All right, we'll get. I'm Robert from Nashville, and I'll see you next week. And I'm Lionel from Toronto, and I guess I'll see you next week at the same time. You have a good one. Peace.